Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority, because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. I particularly urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you soon. Now, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to bear with my word of exhortation, for in fact I have written to you quite briefly. I want you to know that our, brothers, our brother Timothy has been released. If he arrives soon, I will come with him to see you. Greet all your leaders and all the Lord's people. Those from Italy send you their greetings. Grace be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lydia. <clears throat> Would you pray with me again as we come to God's word? Let's pray together. Father, we pause and still our hearts before you. Lord, we have sung to you, we've brought our gifts to you, we've heard your word read, and now we would ask that you would send your spirit to take your word and drive it deeper into our hearts, that we would be changed, that we would see Jesus that we would, as you say here, um, become what is pleasing to you through Jesus. Come and work in us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So a question to get us started for our young people here. Uh, do you have any authorities in your life? What are, what are some of the authorities in your life? Amelia, Amelia pointed at her mom. <laughs> Correct. That's right. Yes. Okay, so smart Atticus pointed also at his mom. Okay, good. So our parents, very good. What else? What are some other authorities in your life? Yes? Teachers, that's good. Okay, any others that we can think of? Atticus? Preachers? Oh, wow. Good job. He's buttering me up here. <laughs> Just preachers in general, not necessarily me. Uh, keep me humble there, right? Do you ever find it hard to trust the authorities in your life? My kids are not making eye contact up here. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. There's something in us. We have authorities in our life. There's something deep in us that just wants to resist that. You know, just a, a, an everyday example for me, you know, I'm sorry, I use sports illustrations all the time, but I'm living my life on a baseball field right now. Although it's about to be over, we're finishing up this weekend. But um, I'm one of those fans, parents, that just likes to ride a ref. You ever been around one of those people? You know, they're just always on that referee or that umpire. And I, you know, I try to hold it back because I'm like, yo, I'm a preacher, I shouldn't be getting all into this. And then... It just pops out. I'm like, oh, come on, Ralph. Didn't you see that? That was right down Main Street. You know, I've got all kinds of sayings for him. <clears throat> I'm watching on TV. I'm watching a football game. I'm just riding those referees. And you know what's funny is when they're making calls for me, I'm like, that's a pretty good referee right there. When my team's getting the calls, when we're not, uh-uh, right? I don't like him anymore. He's blind. He didn't get it right. And maybe that's sometimes true, but maybe it's something in me. Maybe it's something in us. Maybe there's something deep inside of us that struggles with authority. I think deep down, I think this really goes all the way back to the garden. It goes all the way back to our first parents. That deep instinct in our hearts that we want to be in control of our life. And so it's really hard to be under the authority of another person. 
It's scary. And all of us know, I'm sure all of us know, we've known the failure of leaders in our life. We've known pain from that. We've known difficulty. We've seen them blow it big time. And so it's hard to trust the leaders in our life. And add on top of that, we're in a culture right now that is anti-authority. Have you picked up on that yet? You know, in our culture, it's kind of the spirit of the day. And we're kind of swinging on a pendulum. I've talked about this before that, that uh, the world tends to go to one of two extremes. Either authority, wicked authority oppresses us, which has certainly happened in the past. Or we got to swing to the other uh, extreme and say no authority in it. And that's kind of the spirit of our age, especially in our own culture here that says uh, the highest value should be personal freedom and autonomy. So anything in my life that contradicts me, anything in my life that limits me in any way, anything in my life that would hold me back from what I need to do to pursue personal happiness is a bad thing. It's oppressive. That's what the spirit of our age now. And so we're seeing all over the place authorities just getting shamed publicly and tearing them down and throwing it off and even thinking authority in and of itself is evil. We shouldn't have authority. That's very much the spirit of this age. So as we come to our passage today, we're going to ask the question of what does the Bible say about authority? What does the Bible say specifically about authority? church authority and how does it call us to respond so this is one of those sermons that maybe already you're like oh man i should have slept in because it's uncomfortable to talk about this in fact for many of us it probably feels unspiritual to talk about this but as we're looking here at the end of this last section we're closing the our study on the book of hebrews and you notice in this section, there's a lot of kind of closing instructions, a lot of things, practical applications for our life. And there's a lot of things in there, a lot of things you could focus on. But I just, verse 17 just jumped out at me. I just felt this burden that, you know what, this is, this is probably not something that we understand very well, particularly in our culture. And I just had a sense that God wanted us to really take a look at this and really wrestle with authority and specifically biblical authority church authority in our lives that's what we're going to see in our passage we're going to focus on uh, verse 17 but let me say this just to kind of frame this you know it's very critical that whenever you come to the bible that you do not only read it individually it's very easy to do that particularly in our culture that's highly individualistic. So we come to every verse, we come to every passage and every book, and we think, oh, this is written personally for me. Now, it is applicable personally for us, and we should be applying it personally. But the thing that we first need to see is that almost everything in the Scripture is written to the church. It's written to the body of God's people. It's written to us as a group of people. In fact, most of the pronouns you in the Bible, really this is where a southern translation would really help us. They really should be translated y'all. Right? It's to us as a group. And so it's important to understand as we come to Hebrews, this was written to a group of people. It's written to a church. A particular church. Or maybe a group of churches. That are actually learning how to live out their faith in Jesus together as a body. So as we come into that context, it helps us as we read this. Now, even just in this passage that we've read here, even in, in chapter 13, it mentions a number of times your leaders. Now, again, it's talking to a church and it's referring to the spiritual leadership that God has put over them in the local church. He's talking about church leaders here. Look at what it says in verse 7. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. It's calling them back to the, the first kind of wave of church leaders that came in and organized this church. And it's saying, remember them. Remember their faith. Follow them. And then as we look in verse 24, it says, greet all your leaders. This closing greeting. Greet all your leaders and all God's people. It's referring to the church. 
But he specifically is mentioning a number of times in here, they're leaders. He's wanting this church to really understand that God has put these leaders over them in the church. So that helps to frame as we focus on verse 17. Let's look at this. This is what we're going to focus on for most of our time here. Here's what he says. Just look at it again. Let's read through it again. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. Now in the, I'm sorry, I have the older NIV. The newer NIV, what does it say? Can somebody tell me? Have confidence in your leaders. Okay, so it's a little different there. ESV, old NIV, most of the older translations say obey your leaders. So which is it? Well, actually it's both. The Greek word that is used there, translated obey, or have confidence in your leaders, it's the only place that this Greek word occurs in the New Testament. And it's different from the Greek word obey that is used for parents and for slaves to masters, different commands to obey in the Bible. It's a different word. And it does have this sense of to put your confidence in, to be sure of them, to to trust them, essentially. So it's not talking about blind obedience. And I need to point that out because most of the resistance to leadership in our life comes from the ways that leadership has been abused, not only in the world, but in the church, and it has to a tremendous amount. But it does have that sense of let them persuade you. Listen to them, follow them. So we get all these words in this verse here that are kind of rough words for us, right? Obey, authority, submit. Right? Those are not words that we say, oh, Those just warm my heart. I'm just so drawn to those, right? Because again, in our culture, what do we see mostly we want to emphasize in the church in America? We want to emphasize like God is just for you. God is just just delighted with you. God wants to, you know, he is just so eager to be present in your life. You know, we want to emphasize those things and those things are true. But we de-emphasize these things like authority. And obey and submit in our life. You know, I hear people all the time that will say, you know, I don't need to be a part of the church. You know, we can be the, you know, I got my relationship with God and, you know, we, a couple of us can get together and we go have creek down by the river, right? We don't need to have a, we don't need to have a specific church. We don't need to have a specific gathering. We don't need to have uh, leaders in our life. We don't need to have accountability or authority in our life. Uh, I hear all the time people say, you know, I'm spiritual. I'm just not religious. I don't believe in institutional church. Have you ever heard those phrases before? And of course, that sounds like really spiritual, doesn't it? It sounds like, oh, yeah, because that's, again, it's the spirit of our age. It just has the ring of truth to us. But here's the problem with it. It's not biblical. (laughs) That is not what God has created us for. It's not what he's created the church for. What we see over and over and over is we look at not only the New Testament, but the Old, we see that God exercises his authority in our life through human authority. It's how he leads us. It's how he cares for us. It's how he provides for us. He puts human leaders in our life to care for us. So whenever we say, you know, I don't, I don't have any leader but God. I don't have any authority but God. What we really mean is, I'm my own authority. Because if no one can contradict me, if your God can't contradict you, could it be that your God is really just ultimately yourself? But because God loves us, He puts authority into our life. And the reality is we're all under authority at some level. Even our leaders are under authority, or should be. And this is God's design because it's His provision for us. His care for us. I just want to read um, two excerpts from a different place. So, you know, one of the things we see as we come to the book of Acts is we see all these churches being planted. And as the churches are being planted, the first thing that these church planters do, like Paul and others, is they appoint and establish elders over the local church. They appoint shepherds, spiritual leaders, who will have responsibility over that local body of Christ. So we see that God's intention is that we belong to a specific local body of Christ. Uh, a place where we can be accountable. A place that we can commit ourselves. A place that we can 
be under God's care through the care of shepherds in our life. Here's what 1 Peter 5 says. Uh, to the elders among you. This is Peter calling himself uh, an elder. I appeal to you as a fellow elder and as a witness of Christ's sufferings who will also share in the glory to be revealed. He's speaking specifically to the elders, the shepherds over a particular church. And here's what he says. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them. You see, that's this calling for authority in our life. Is that they're shepherds caring for us. And so if you are a follower of Jesus, God intends for you to be a part of a particular flock. Uh, shepherds need to know who their flock is. A flock needs to know who their shepherds are. That's a part of how God's designed it. And here's the most stunning one. There's this tremendous scene in Acts 20 where Paul is kind of the end of his ministry. He's headed to Jerusalem. He's pretty certain that he might be martyred whenever he gets to Jerusalem. He knows that his time's nearing an end. And he's in a hurry to get there for Passover. But he makes a stop. He's going by ship. He stops. He sends to Ephesus for the elders. And they come out and meet him. And I just imagine this scene as being on the beach there. Uh, and it's his farewell to these elders. So he is, he's planted this church. He's poured into these elders. And he's pleading with them. He tells them, this is the last time I'm going to see you. And he pleads with them to do this. Here's what he says. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Wow. You know, as a shepherd that God has appointed, that just grabs me. Wow, this flock is precious to God. He bought it with his own flock, that, uh, with his own blood. That's, he's talking about you. He has bought you with the blood of his son. And he is so committed to your care that he calls shepherds to this high responsibility of giving an account for their care and their shepherding over you. Listen, studying this this week, I was trembling. I was just praying because I'm so aware of my weakness as a shepherd. And I'm just praying, God, help me. Help me to be faithful. So we see this, this pattern that we see there. God calls uh, authorities. He puts authority in our life. He puts shepherds into our life. And God intends for his, uh, his people to be organized into a body. Now, this is why we do church membership. This is why it's so important for us as a church that we call on one another to commit to the body, to take vows. To uh, The fifth vow uh, of our denomination is, do you submit to the government and discipline of the church? When we're teaching the vows, that's always the one where it's like, oh, this is going to go over like a lead balloon. You're actually asking people to commit themselves and to promise, I'm going to submit to the government authority of this church. And that's a scary thing, isn't it? It's very scary to give up control of your life. But this is how God cares for us. That's the important thing to see here. As he says in our passage, Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that will be an advantage to you. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. See, that's this high calling of authority. When you're called to authority, you're called to a higher standard. And you are called that one day... I'm going to have to give an account for how I lead and shepherd God's people. But the thing to see is that this is God's care for us. Putting authority and shepherds in our life is a part of how God pr protects and provides for us. So here's the second question. How does he call us to respond to this leadership in our life? As, as sheep, as a part of his flock, how we called to respond to those shepherds and it's very clear in the passage submit another one of those really fun words right what do you think of when you hear the word submit do you think oh i can't wait to submit that sounds so wonderful the reality is that is not what we naturally think it's a scary word what does it mean to submit? Biblical submission. It, again, it's not, blind, it's not blind obedience. 
but is rather entrusting yourself to the care of another. It is entrusting your well-being to another person. Now that is scary, isn't it? But you see, the Bible calls us in so many places to submit. Do you know the Bible calls hus- uh, wives to submit to husbands? It calls children to submit to their parents. It calls employees to submit to their employers. It calls citizens to submit to the governing authorities. That's hard, right? Why is it so hard? Because they don't know what they're doing, right? (laughs) That's the hardest part about submission. When you're under the authority of another person, you very clearly see they've got problems. They're weak. They don't know what they're doing. So I got to help them. I got to be in charge. The hardest thing to do is to give up that control. Because we are so deeply committed to independence. We so deeply believe that we know what's best for our lives. And so especially whenever we see that the authorities God's put over us are just human beings like us. It's just hard to let go. It's just hard to entrust your well-being to another person. To submit. But here's what we miss out on. When we don't submit, we miss out on protection and care. God's protection and care. Through the human shepherds and authorities he's put in our life. Now I need to just say right now, this, is, this has been an area that God has worked on in my life. And by the way, everyone is under authority. If someone is not under authority, that is a dangerous place to be. Because again, it's God's protection from us. But I, this has been a learning process for me in my life, to learn how to be under authority. You know, I serve on our session here. The shepherds of our church are the elected elders of the church. There's four elders, including myself. Now, the way that we function in this way in our denomination is none of us is in charge. It's a little bit different. Sometimes we think in our culture, you know, the, the pastor, like he's the, he's the in charge guy. Right? He's the one who's in charge of everybody else. Well, that's not how we operate. We operate as a plurality of elders. We share leadership together and we submit to one another. Let me tell you, when we started this church, that was hard for me to learn. Because there were times where what I wanted, what I thought was best, and what they thought was best was different. And that was hard for me. And what did I have to learn how to do? What did God teach me how to do? To submit. To my brothers. And to realize maybe I don't understand everything. These four men who love Jesus think we need to do this. I think we need to do this. It takes humility to say maybe just possibly they're right. (laughs) And then we take a vote and God shows us they're right. Right? But here's, let me give you another example in my life of how God really taught me this. So whenever I was... uh, uh, whenever I came to Christ, I've shared this before, I came to Christ in a campus ministry at the University of Georgia. And the leadership in this campus ministry was just outstanding. I mean, just wonderful leadership. I grew in my understanding of the gospel. The way that we learned to do ministry in that context was just, it was so, it was so rich, it was so good. And uh, I went on staff with that ministry and I served two years in that ministry. And I'm just like, man, this This is how it should be done, obviously. And then the organization I worked for, Campus Crusade, moved me from Georgia to Ole Miss. I didn't want to be moved. I liked being where I was. So first of all, I didn't understand that. And so I went to this other campus ministry that had very different leadership. And right off the bat, I saw all kinds of ways like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Right? I mean, clearly you don't do it this way. I mean, I had problems with so many things. And I thought I knew everything. I thought I was the most gifted minister you've ever seen. And so I bucked him left and right. I bucked his leadership. I made his life miserable. And, and as a staff, like we would all get together and talk about all the ways that he wasn't doing it right. I mean, it's really embarrassing to admit. But it's true. And then after about a year, God convicted me. He just opened my eyes to this. And it was like... You know what I came to understand? 
God's not holding me accountable for how he leads. That's not my responsibility. That's not my area. What I'm going to have to answer for is how do I respond and submit and follow his leadership? <coughs> Period. So why don't I let him do what God's called him to do and I focus on what God's called me to do? So I reached out to him and I said, let's get together. And we got together and we're sitting together. I think we were at like a Waffle House or something. I'm sitting across from him and I said, Isaac, I need to repent to you. I have not submitted to you. I've not followed you. I've not trusted you. And I've bucked your leadership. And I'm sorry. I ask your forgiveness. You should have seen just his body language. I mean, he just, it was like I took a big 500 pound weight off of his shoulders. It's exactly what he's talking about here. I was making his work a burden. And I could just see the joy that came over him. And I said, you know what? From this moment forward, you tell me to do it, I'm going to go do it. Would you believe I actually learned something from him? Believe it or not. I mean, I knew everything before. But listen, I learned from him. And I learned things that I could never learn in any other place. God put me there. And I came to appreciate him. <clears throat> things that he did that my other's leaders didn't do. I grew so much in that second year in that ministry. Because I submitted. See the whole time. I wasn't receiving what God had from me through that leader. Because I wouldn't release control. I wouldn't entrust my well-being to him. But when I did that. The unity that came. There was growth. There was blessing. The leader that I am today is because of that experience of submission. So the question I want to put to you is, what do you think God might have for you in submission in your faith to the leaders God's put in your life? What might God have for you? I know this is hard. You know, I, want to, I just want to name that. I know that we're in all kinds of different places. For some of us might be like, amen, I'm right there. I'm yours. But I know that for many of us, this is really hard. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, we've had leaders in our life that have failed us. Many of us have had leaders in our life that have used their leadership for their own benefit. And when you experience that, and when you've been wounded by leaders, it is deeply painful. It is, it is a betrayal of of, an, of, of what's been entrusted to them. It's a betrayal. And one day, all of us as leaders, we're going to have to answer for all of that to the Lord. But I just recognize that for many of us, we have been wounded, we have been hurt, and we are scared to trust. We're scared to submit. So I just want to drill down on this last question. How do we begin to open up? How do we begin to open up? And here's the key to submission. Whether you're a kid, whether you're an employee, whether you're a, a wife, whether you, no matter where you are, here's the key to submission. When you submit, you are not submitting to that person ultimately. You are ultimately submitting to Jesus. And when you see that, it empowers you to submit. Now, I love what Paul says in Ephesians 5.21. He's about to go in throughout a whole section where he talks about our relationships and, and how they're to fit together and how we submit. But he starts off with this verse. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. What fuels our submission? Worship of Jesus. When we submit, it's worship to Jesus. We're ultimately submitting to him. Because the authorities he's put in our life have been put there by him. And so when we submit to them, we're submitting to him. <coughs> I'm sorry. Get some water. Right? That's how, that's what's really happening there. And now here's the reality. If you are a Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, here's what it means. Jesus is your king. He's your authority. He is the ultimate authority. And he is the only authority in your life that will die for you. 
That's what his authority looks like. That's in fact what all the pattern of leadership is to look like. A leader is to lead like Jesus. Laying down their life, their preferences, their, their needs for the sake of those that they're leading. You see, Jesus as our leader, as our king, has laid down his life for us. He has committed himself to us. He is in control of all the details of our life. He will care for us. He's promised us that. He's never going to leave us or forsake us. It's earlier in chapter 7 where it says, remember your leaders. Right after that in verse 8 it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the ultimate reminder that in our submission, thank you Corey, in our submission, Jesus is present. He is there. He sees us. He will provide for us. And so the more and more that we are secure in His love and His leadership in our life, the more that we are enabled to submit to the leaders that He has put in our life. So just a few points of application here. How can you apply this? First one is this. Commit yourself to this church. Or to a church. Commit. Welcome accountability into your life. Which is so Countercultural for us today because we want to keep our options open we don't want anybody telling us what to do we want to be free to do whatever we want to do and God says that's actually slavery to yourself commit get involved welcome people into your life let them speak into your life open yourself up to the body of Christ join the church become a member we can talk about what that means later that is one of the most fundamental applications of what God calls us. Belong to a body of Christ. Don't be a lone ranger Christian. It's almost a contradiction in terms. He calls us to be a part of a particular body and to come under leadership. Now secondly this, open yourself to the leadership of this church. Welcome them into your life. Listen to us. Respond to our leadership. Apply the teaching of the word. You know, there's one way of submitting in just how you listen to a sermon. Now, you guys are great about this, but I, I, it's just important to know, you know, how we listen to a sermon is an act of submission. You know, do, am I active in it? Am I working to stay engaged? You know, I know it's hard to listen. I go on too long. I get that, right? It takes real intentionality to follow, to listen, to take it in, and then to go and apply it to your life. But that's a part of how we submit. And pray for us. Pray for your leaders. It's a burden. It is a burden. And we need your prayers and your support and your encouragement. And then finally this, stick around for the congregational meeting. That's a way... To submit to the leaders of this church. Where you'll get to hear from the elders of the church. And, and interact. You know we're not authoritarian. In our style of leadership. We're shepherds. Shepherds love their sheep. They're, they sacrifice for their sheep. They're gentle with their sheep. If we're not gentle. We're not being like Jesus. And we are under the authority of Jesus. As leaders. Okay. Let me close this there. Okay. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. And you have called us to submit to your love and your care over our life. And Lord, so often it is hard because in our flesh we want our own way. I feel it in my own heart, Lord. You know how much I struggle to submit to you. But would you... Free us, make us secure in your love and care in our life that we are able to submit to one another. That we're able to submit to the leaders that you have brought in our life. That we would be a church that is marked by mutual accountability, belonging to one another, opening our lives to be spoken into by one another. Make us that kind of church as you have called us to be. In Christ's name we pray, amen.